this is just a simple messing around. I was looking at this mechanism, and the mechanism, believe it or not, here is uh, a folding umbrella. <laughs> and um, I can actually kind of deploy it uh, by changing this variable. Uh, hang on, let's go back here. Maybe it's 200 millimeters. You can see here, this is the center line of the umbrella. This is just one of the arms. And you see, as I bring this down, maybe like to 250 or, you know, something you can see it's, it's coming in. Uh, and at the other end of the scale, you know, I can bring it out to say 100 and it deploys. You know, I was just playing with this mechanism, you know, as you do on a Sunday night. And um, thought, well, you know, what about the shape of the umbrella? What about the fabric? And that might be an interesting, you know, really simple um, lofting uh, or surfacing exercise. So, uh, I mean, there's a million ways you could do this, of course. And here's one. Uh, the first thing I did was I, I created a variable. I was pretty much I start most of my modeling like this. And, you know, I made a, a variable number of sides. Then I made a base sketch. Now the base sketch has got two really important things in it. First of, the, first of all, it's got this um, base circle uh, and I actually used uh, one of these guys. So I, I basically did construction geometry with a polygon. And then I'll just do one over here. You can see what it looks like. Uh, I did one of these um, like this. And then I chose a number uh, for that. Now you can see it's still all construction geometry and a very important thing is that I wanted to use a variable to define this number, uh, but more on that later. The, the second thing I did was to create an arc uh, between this, like that. And then um, I used a pattern, a, a circular pattern. And the circular pattern also is uh, referring to the variable. Let me get rid of that. Now we're going back over here. You can see the arc that I did. Uh, in fact, I did this one here because you can see where the dimensions on it. Um, so I dimensioned the main base circle for the, for the hexagon, and I created this arc. And this arc could be, you know, I could change this around. Um, whatever, make it make it back to 1200 just for the moment here and why don't we make this a variable at the same time so let's make a new variable and just type a name in are we doing this inline um i don't know scallop yeah scallop rad something like that I just hit enter a couple of times and now that is uh, you can see here that's a variable uh, for there so we've got the variable for the pattern of this is also the number of sides it's the, and it's the same variable I'm using for the actual number of sides here. So there's a couple of, um, uh, you know, couple of tweaks in there for the sketch but essentially now we've got this shape here. Now I'm going to use a loft and I'm going to loft from this enclosed region that we just created and loft it up to uh, the apex. Now, the first thing I did actually was, I didn't do the, um, uh, a solid loft, I, I did a surface loft and I chose all these edges and we could do that, let's, let's try that actually. Uh, let's do a surface loft and we choose the profile here. So we're gonna use these six edges for the first profile and the second profile I'm going to use is just the vertex up the top so of course that's a separate sketch and it's a very simple one it's simply a vertex so we have actually something that looks you know like that pretty easy and if we go back to one of those variables like the the scallop radius and make that much smaller you'll see that you know we have a a reasonable thing in there so let's make it halfway in between or so now that's not really how most umbrellas look like so we can play with the loft a little bit more and we can actually give a, a profile of the starting condition of tangency and in fact it's not the starting condition that we well we could try uh, let, let's try the starting condition and make it uh, normal to the profile 
Okay, that looks like something that might be on top of a cake, or, or perhaps a, I don't know, maybe a, I don't know, there's not too many umbrellas that look like that. So let's ditch that one and go for the end profile. Now, if we make the end profile normal to this, yeah, it'll actually be normal to the plane that that sketch is on. So if we go, uh, sorry, tangent, 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 tangent. Um, let's make it tangent. Ah, now we're talking. We actually have something that looks pretty reasonable and we could leave it at that because we've got our skin and we could go on and, and incorporate the mechanism that I was doing before and then, you know, it'd be great. The problem is, is that I haven't quite hooked it all up now. If I want eight sides, I want an octagon in here. It's not going to update properly because remember in this loft, we had chosen six selections. So there's a kind of an easy way to make this work um, for that loft. And instead I'm going to use a solid loft. And the solid I'm going to use uh, needs two profiles as well. And the profile I'm going to use is a face. And remember this, this is a closed sketch, so it creates a face. So that first face is, is that whole sketch. And you can see here it's the face of the base sketch. It's not individual entities. And I think you can see where this is going, but if I use my second um, selection here, the second profile is the vertex again, as before, and we've still got the same end conditions. Actually, we can play with both of that. Uh, we could make it normal to the profile at the start. Yeah, and that still looks a little implausible. Uh, we could play with the magnitude a little bit, like this. Um, but I think, in fact, it looks better with none. Um, and this is a, I, I was actually creating this for a very different reason, and I might show that video later on, but I was creating a deep umbrella that, for a studio, sort of a lighting setup. Um, so let's play with that. I mean, that, that is going to be based on, and if I use my finalize button, I can actually regenerate this while I'm actually moving this. This is pretty cool uh, because, you know, I was looking to create a deep, a deep umbrella and um, kind of like an octo one, uh, which in fact is what we've just done there. Now I can play with that depth. Um, I can play with the scallop radius. Uh, maybe the 600 was a little bit better. Yeah, that's good. And because we have created a solid loft, um, it looks a bit funny. So why don't we delete that face that was on the uh, that we created there, and now it's going to be left uh, with a surface. And you can see here we've got a single surface um, like that, which is in fact what we want. So if I hide the sketches by using Shift P, clean up the model. Um, it's looking good and let's test this theory that I had before which is if I change the number of sides the face of that sketch is still uh, if we go back to here the face of this sketch is still a closed region like that um, so it doesn't matter how many sides we've got now this should work and uh, let's try this let's try six. Oh yes it does work what about uh, even numbers or odd numbers odd numbers yes we can have a seven sided umbrella or 11 sides or 13 if we like to keep to prime numbers um, yeah so that's pretty much it I'm going to go back now and finish my assembly and get onto my studio lighting setup which is quite an exciting video in itself because I'm using render studio to really mimic the physics uh, the physical setup in my studio here